Toronto. Sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the mysterious, all-powerful character who is a problem to the police, but a crusader for law. In reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone, but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk, but stronger than steel. Today's transcribed episode of the Fox feature, The Blue Beetle, is entitled The Asylum of Dr. Dreer. Who is Dr. Dreer and what sort of an asylum does he run? Is he a friend of the unfortunate or is he a schemer against law and order? As our story opens today, Patrolman Dan Garrett, who is really the Blue Beetle, is entering the little apothecary shop of his friend and confidant, Dr. Franz the chemist. Hello, Doc. Cash customer. Oh, hello, Danny. What's new? Uh, there's a young lady waiting for you. Oh, a young lady? Where? Uh, back in the laboratory. Oh, what does she want and who is she? Uh, Diana Tilson. Banker Tilson's foster daughter? Yes. What's she doing here? I don't know, Danny. Uh, hadn't you better go back and talk with her? She seems very much disturbed about something. All right, I'll talk with her. Uh, good evening, Miss Tilson. Oh, good evening. You're patrolman Dan Garrett, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Oh, I'm so glad you've come. I've been waiting some time. What is it you wish to see me about? Well, my father, uh, rather my foster father, has disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. You're sure he hasn't gone on town oh, on I'm business? positive. Here's a note he left for me. Hmm. I'm going away for a long rest. Don't worry. Linus will take care of everything. Love, Dad. Oh, well, this doesn't look as if your father had been kidnapped or met foul play. It's his handwriting, isn't it? Yes, I think so, but I'm not certain. Are there any suspicious circumstances mixed up with the disappearance? Yes, there are. And what are they? Well, for one thing, Dad's nephew, Linus Weatherby. Linus Weatherby? Yes, do you know him? Mm, only by reputation. Quite a playboy. Yes, yeah, so I've heard. Well, he's Dad's nephew and an officer of Dad's bank. Recently, things haven't been going any too well at the bank, and Dad's been worried. Financially, I mean. I see. Go on. Linus insists that Dad is acting strangely, and a month or so ago, he called in a psychiatrist, a Dr. Greer, to examine Dad. What was his opinion? That Dad needed a rest. Well, your father's note seems to indicate he has taken Dr. Greer's advice. Yes, but here's a strange thing. Dad can't read or write without his glasses. He wears them constantly. He'd be lost without them. Today, I found them in his desk drawer. When did you last see him? Two nights ago. Well, I wouldn't worry. He'll probably send for his glasses in a day or so, and you'll learn his whereabouts. But there's one thing more. What is that? Since father's disappearance, Linus has become more insistent that I marry him. He acts like someone who has the whip hand of the situation. Oh, he's becoming unbearable. Hmm. Well, why don't you go to the commissioner? He'd probably turn the city upside down to locate your father. But that's just the point. I don't want to do that. If he is all right, he'd resent such interference. Then if he isn't... Oh, I don't know what to do. I'm so worried and puzzled. Oh, I don't... there, there, don't cry. Oh. I'll do what I can to help you find your dad. Oh. Uh, you run along home and I'll phone you in the morning. Oh, thank you so much. There, that's to show you how much I appreciate your help. Goodbye. Gosh, I'm glad Mannequin didn't see her kiss me. I, I'd never hear the last of it. And where is it we're headed for this morning, Danny? The booby hatch. The booby hatch, is it? Mm-hmm. Uh, did you reserve a single or a double room? A single. Uh, that'll be big enough for you. Is that so? And under what name did you register me? Sherlock Holmes. And I suppose you're Dr. Watson. No, no, no. Daniel Boone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're calling upon a Dr. Greer, who, according to Charlie Storm of the News, runs a private sanitarium for the mentally upset out of Tanglewild. Oh, you mean he runs an insane asylum? That's right. And why are we visiting Dr. Greer? We'd like to discover if he has a patient there by the name of Tilson. The banker? The same. Oh, say... Does the commissioner know about this? No, this is a private mission. Okay, Danny, I'm with you. Let's go. Good morning, Mr. 
examining officers. Something wrong? One of my attendants said you wish to speak with me. Uh, Dr. Dreer. That's right. We're not here officially, Dr. Dreer. Uh, Miss Tilson, who happens to be a friend of mine, asked me to drive out here and ask if her father was here. Yes. Yes, he's here. Would you like to see him? Yes, if we might. Very well. If you'll just come with me, I'll let you talk with him. But not very long. He's very nervous and tired, on the verge of a breakdown. You realize, I'm sure, what times like these can mean to a man in his position. Quite. Well, here we are. Uh, two gentlemen to see you, Mr. Tilson. Uh, come in. Uh, come in. Excuse my not rising. Very tired, you know. Nerve shot. Well, that's perfectly all right. We just call at the request of your foster daughter. She was worried about you and thought you might be out here. Oh, dear Diana. Uh, tell her not to worry. I'll be all right in time, I hope. Uh, tell her Linus will take care of everything. He's a good boy. Uh, he'll take care of it. I'll tell her, Mr. Tilson. Uh, just one thing more. Uh, did you write her this note? Uh, let's see. Hmm. My glasses are foggy. I see better without them. Hmm. Uh, yes, yes, I, I wrote this note. Why? Oh, she just wondered, that's all. Well, we won't disturb you any longer. I hope you recover your health and strength very quickly, Mr. Tilson. Goodbye. And goodbye, and thanks for coming. Uh, tell Diana not to visit me until I'm... Oh, my head, oh, You're my very head, quickly, gentlemen. Oh. He's a very oh. sick man. So it appears... Goodbye and thanks. Come on, Mike. Well, what do you think, Danny? I think it's strange that a man who's supposed to be unable to read or write without his glasses takes them off to read that note. Step on it, Mike. I've got a hunch and I want to play it quickly. certainly does himself proud. There must be some money in psychiatry. Hello. Oh, hello. <laughs> you're Sir Lancelot, aren't you? I'm the Blue Beetle. Oh, no, you're not. You're Sir Lancelot. I'm King Arthur. I know. I see. Well, let's pretend I'm Sir Lancelot's brother. His twin brother. Uh, yes. <laughs> we got twins in here. Have you? Yes. What's their name? Tilson. Tilson. Yes. Yeah. Are you sure? By the Holy Grail, I swear. I've seen them. Show me, will you? Uh, on one condition, Sir Lancelot. What's that? Uh, promise me you'll get me a new round table. They took mine away. Okay, I promise. Uh, follow me, but don't make a sound. There's black knights on guard, and Merlin the magician is always snooping around. Who's Merlin? The wicked magician who runs this place. Calls himself... Dr. Dreer, but he can't fool me. <laughs> here, here, this way. Uh, follow me. I am thy father's spirit, doomed for a certain time to walk the night, and by the day confined to vast and vast. Let me but look once more upon my beloved friends. And I shall die. Dickory, dickory, dog. The mouse ran up the clock. The clock struck one, the mouse ran down. See, here's one twin. He's the crazy one. They keep him locked up. Thanks very much, King Arthur. You're welcome, Sir Lancelot. I'm going now, before the black knights come. <laughs> Don't forget about my round table. Yeah, what's going on outside my door? Is that you, Mr. Tilson? The real Mr. Tilson? Yeah, of course it's me. Who are you? The blue beetle. The yeah, blue beetle. <laughs> I thought they'd get you someday. Always doing crazy stunts. Shh. I'm here to save you. Uh, who sent you? Never mind that now. Tell me who put you in here. Oh, that low-down nephew of mine, he and Dr. Dreer... They must have drugged me. Just a minute now till I try one of my master keys. To horse, Sir Lancelot, to horse. The black knights are coming. To horse, to horse. There he is. Come on, Joe. Hey, come up the stairway. Hey. It's the blue beetle. It's the blue beetle. Yes, it's the blue beetle. Come on, you mugs, and get nipped. Stop him with the rubber hose, Joe. You'll have to get under my guard first. Let's get that gun out of you, Joe. Hey, what's the back of that room there, Joe? Sorry, but I'm going the other way. Here, here, here. 
here. What's going on here? Look, Blue Beetle. He was talking to Tilton. Yeah, shut up. Put on your gas mask and stand aside till I give him a shot of this tear gas. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They've killed Sir Lancelot. Grab the Blue Beetle, boys. Sir Lancelot's dead. Put him in a straight jacket. Okay, Long long in the morning, Lancelot. we'll give the Blue Beetle a permanent room without windows. <laughs> happen to the Blue Beetle in the sanitarium of Dr. Dreer? Will he be able to free himself from the straitjacket and save Banker Tilson? These questions will be answered in the next transcribed episode of the Blue Beetle. copyrighted Fox feature, appearing in Mystery Men Comics Magazine and the Blue Beetle Magazine. The Blue Beetle is on the air twice a week on this same station. Consult the broadcast schedule in your local newspapers. And don't forget to listen in to The Blue Beetle.